Hello, this is Out of the Blue Comes Francis Zhu. I'm Francis, and welcome to my show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Out of the Blue Comes Francis Zhu show. Today I have David Hofmeister with me again. Hi, David. Hi, Francis. Hi. <laughs> well, our topic today is tabula rasa, the pristine mind. What a topic! Yeah, yeah. That's that seems to be the thing that we are focusing on the most all the time now. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you actually. Had a newsletter called Tabula Rasa very very early on in the nineties maybe, and the first sentence on that newsletter was, "A peaceful mind is a present moment state of mind." So, it really comes down to the present moment. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's it seems to be. The the point of all spirituality, of all authentic awakening, and and yet the practical aspects of it, we like to talk about because sometimes people say, "Well, that sounds good sentimentally, but oh, I've got such a complicated、uh, world I'm dealing with and a complicated life experience." Yeah, it. You know, this morning I was up and、uh, just get every setup ready. I was、um, just listening to music, facing the window, facing the the big glass window here. Had my eyes closed, and I, when I was listening to the music and had my eyes closed, I was just praying. I said, "Spirit, how can I give today? How can I give? What do you want me to give today? Because I I really want to." Welcome every day with that state of mind, and I opened my eyes, and there was this huge rainbow showed up、mm. in the sky. The rainbow was only there for two minutes, but、mm. it was in that moment. It was almost like a direct conversation、mm. with the spirit.、Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that's so amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was like love. Is received, love is given and received in that moment. It it isn't even about a question, and it it isn't about a specific form answer, but it was a present experience,、yeah. and I really feel it is that in that connection and communication with the spirit that is where love is experienced and received. Yeah. Yeah, we're so used to when we use the word "how" as a question. We're so used to thinking in terms of form and doing, and then this is more just the presence of love. When you say "how," then you're to merge or join and be that presence, and then then everything else. It's kind of like Saint Augustine said, "Love and do what you will." The do what you will is really an afterthought because it's it's supposed to be involuntary. It's not supposed to be something you're consciously trying to figure out、mm-hmm. in time and space.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> rainbows. <laughs> I think of that、uh, Wizard of Oz song、uh, that Dorothy sings, "Somewhere Over the Rainbow," and then here you are praying, closing your eyes, and <laughs> you open your eyes in a big rainbow across the sky.、Yeah. <laughs> It was like right in that moment, I was so touched because I I know in that moment,、mm. you know, that was a dialogue going、mm. on. It's、mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> the language that I understand. Yeah, yeah, colors. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's exactly、um, what we want to talk about today. Is you know we can live in such a way where it's life is a constant prayer. Life is just a constant prayer, and we're asked to be used to to be in in that state of mind, to be in that forgiven state of mind, and having everything really be given to us. 
And yesterday I was listening to your broadcast on YouTube, um, a bilingual broadcast on our Spanish YouTube ch channel, UCDM channel, and you were talking about the the journey of the last thirty plus years with the course, and how. At some point, you said, "Oh, I, I just give you the spirit, everything I owe, which is my body, you know, yeah. everything that it's up to for you to use." And then, for the thirty plus years to follow, you said you really just did one thing, which was to have those amazing encounters with. The friends that were sent by the spirit, and have the same kind of conversation—not the same exactly—but it is all about how to unwind the mind and how to get in touch with the spirit within. And I, I was listening to that, and I was thinking that is exactly how we can give our mind and our words, our body, our mouth, our Um, time to be used for a single purpose. That is what a single purpose looks like, you know. And then looking at your life, it feels such a demonstration of how everything just works out perfectly,、mm. amazingly. Yeah, yeah. I think most people can relate to the idea of of. Just these friendly, happy connections. You know, that's what people really want when they say, "Can you want to have a cup of tea or you want to have a coffee together?" That's what people mean when they say, "Let's take a walk together." That's what people mean by "Let's go out for dinner." You know, it's not really about the walk or the food. It's not really about the coffee or the tea. It's just the connection. Everybody likes to feel connected, and. It's we have great guidance from Jesus and and of course the miracles to tell us how to experience that connection consistently, and yet it's in the the willingness to just go with it. You know, it's not there's not a formula or something where you can say, oh, I've achieved this or that. You just dive in, and then you find out you feel happy, you feel friendly, you feel peaceful, you feel. Like that urge to connect is there, and you love to engage it, and then you finally start to feel like you are it. You you just say, "Oh, I am happy. I am friendly. <laughs> I, I am connected." You know, in, in the end, it's not like a, an efforting. It's just a, it's a, it's a state of mind. And it is a, in a way gradually you start to realize, "Oh, I'm I am the spirit." I, you know, the spirit is so gentle. The spirit is so loving, and we get into in touch with that, that essence. Gradually, this is who I am. This is what I am. Yeah, yeah. It's everything is so spontaneous. So for me, it was fun having all these encounters. But then at some point, you know, people would say the standard things like. Where are you from, or where do you live? And for me, it was exciting because I didn't know what words would pop out in that moment. Because you start to feel like you're you're everywhere, and you're so expansive and so connected, and you feel so good. But yet, you have a, a specific encounter that the spirits giving you the words and just the perfect words for that encounter. So there's no repetition. You don't have to repeat ideas, or you don't have to gauge something or compare something. There's nothing to compare in the present moment. So we sometimes call that tabula rasa state of mind, where you you leave your mind a blank slate for the spirit to shine, for the spirit, for the love to pour through, and it's only. Having preconceptions about things and agendas that block the light from shining. So that's why tabula rasa state of mind is so important. I have to say that I really feel so grateful because I I benefited from living very close by with you. So in a way, like it's in a big swirl because my life becomes、um, this kind of. Uh, very rapid unfolding, moment to moment, 
and all the agendas, all the I know mind, just got washed away because I couldn't really、um, go about it with a preconceived idea of how it's going to unfold and that is going to serve myself and the community and everybody. So it is not really that hard to very quickly be humbled. And step back and say, okay, I have no idea what serves everybody, myself included, and then just watch how everything miraculously unfold, and that really build trust. It, it's more more than anything, more than any words, any teachings in form that can、um, can can do is my my first hand personal experience in watching. How the spirit is behind absolutely everything, and things unfold miraculously for everybody that I perceive. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And even when we talk about tabula rasa, we use that term、um, to name a, a program、uh, called Mystery School, and we have done. We were just counting. We were we have done about five、um, very long retreats, three、um, probably six week long devotional retreats in Mallorca, Spain, and two mystery school in Living Miracles Monastery. And all five these kind of long term retreats have the same kind of.、Um, Structure, which is the goal, is coming together in listen and follow the spirit, and together we're collaborating in that curriculum. And none of us know the curriculum in form ahead of time, so we just come together to strengthen our trust together to. Be in prayer every day, and listen and follow. Take on the parts that are given by the Spirit for us every single moment, and have a first-hand experience of how life flows, how Spirit is alive. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, you were mentioning those those five、uh, devotional stays in mystery schools, and I also thought of that、uh, Mystery Bay retreat that we did. It was、yeah. very mystical, right on the coast, down、uh, south of Sydney, down the coast there, where we had a whiteboard,、yeah. and we just said, "Okay, just check the whiteboard," because people said, "What's the program? What's what is the curriculum?" And we said, "Well, just check the whiteboard." All. The whole retreat, like it was a weekend retreat, and that's really kind of like our tabula rasa mystery school is that that we have this deep calling in our heart to trust and to learn to follow spirit, to listen and follow, and then、uh, we always talk about Plan Bs, which are the ego's backup plans for everything. But I was just thinking, we don't even have Plan A. <laughs> uh, for the Tavi La Rasa Mystery School, we don't have a Plan B and we don't have a Plan A because it's given in the moment. So we pray at the in the beginning of the day, and then we all pray together and we feel what is given from the Spirit. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to rest today. I'm going to go off, and you know, it's it's all just given. It's very exciting because、uh, you're not trying to fit into the timeline. And fit into a prearranged plan, but you're in the joy of the spirit of just being with what's given, and then everybody feels it. So then you start to say, "Wow, is this even possible?" And people, say, "Yes, it is. It, this is very possible. It's 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 actually natural." And then there's there's such a happiness and joy with it that people think, "I'm just going to、uh, try to live my life like this,"、yeah. and and they have. A, a very relaxed, enjoyable life when they learn to actually practically trust、yeah. and listen and follow the spirit. And that is the goal, you know, to be able to live like this、uh, every moment. And I think, you know, in that way, we're not different from anybody 
who is probably listening right now is, you know, it, that's the that's the goal we all have in mind, just to get in touch with the spirit in this very moment, and listen to his instruction and follow, and then receive the miracle, receive the love. So. I I even remember when we had the final, the last、um, devotional six week devotional stay retreat in Mallorca, Spain.、Um, that was from you you know everybody is taking part in the plan. Everybody is prompted, instructed, carried out the spirit plan. Because this woman Amara, I believe her name was, she came to our retreat. In Ireland, months before, and she was talking to me first, and she said, "I really want to have a one-on-one with David. I really want to have a one-on-one with David. Can I have a one-on-one with David?" And I said, "What do you want to have the one-on-one about?" She said, "I, I have been single for many, many, many years. I want to have a relationship. That's my deepest desire." So I said, "Okay, okay, great." Then she went to have. A one-on-one with you, for whatever reason, that question did not come up at all. It's almost like the spirit came through her and basically said, "I have three fincas, three casitas on the island of Mallorca, Spain. I've been praying. I've been praying for five years. Why don't you use that for your purpose?" So that became the whole question that she. She was asking you, "Why is spirit not using my finca?" Yeah, yeah, it was funny that she would see me on something online, come all the way up to to Ireland from Spain, talk to you first, and then she would talk to me about the, how her fincas were not used, even though she prayed and gave them over five years. And so, at some point, we were just talking about that, and I said, "Well, maybe that's part of why we're meeting right now." We do these、uh, six-week devotional retreats in Spain on on the island of Mallorca, and you're sharing that. And so then,、um, all kinds of miracles just came out of that. Very joyful, and and then as an afterthought, I think Jackie went over there, and the fincas, you know, were in some disrepair. They they really weren't prepared for. A six-week devotional retreat with a number of people. They needed some preparation, and Jackie was there. And then a handyman showed up after she had told you that, and then she she got in the relationship. She got in the relationship, but it came from the purpose. It、yes. what didn't come from the goal of of a per, interpersonal relationship. It came from following the prompt for the purpose. Exactly, that's that's what it is. In preparing the finca for the devotional stay, she got a relationship after years of yeah, praying, yeah. even though that wasn't even shared. Yeah, yeah. With you. yeah. That was just, that's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> but I was just thinking, you know, everybody has a curriculum that is carefully and lovingly planned by the spirit. It looks differently at the level of form, but in the end, it is the same curriculum. It's all about forgiveness.、Mm. And when we even come together. Twenty people or thirty people come together for these very long devotional retreats or mystery schools. We are all called to participate in in this particular time and space to accomplish for forgiveness with this shared curriculum in some way, and it is just you know very very joyful to participate in the in in that way. And watch everything unfold. Yeah, yeah, it's it's quite miraculous for us always because you know we we just feel the joy and we feel the purpose, but we don't know the specifics of how everything will unfold. That's given over to the spirit. And I remember there was a, a transcendentalist in the United States、uh, some hundreds of years ago. Uh, uh, Named Henry David Thoreau, and he was lived with all these、uh, the same time period of Walt Whitman and Roy, or、uh, Emerson and many 
many famous uh, poets. It was Robert Frost and so on and so forth. And he wrote a, a series of essays when he went to live deliberately in a simple life by on a cottage by a Walden Pond. And in one of his essays, he wrote a very famous line and said, Most men live lives of quiet desperation. And the reason it's quiet desperation is because there's compromise going on in the mind. There's there's judgments and there's agendas. That's the definition of, of a sleeping mind. And it it's believes in the ego. And yet, when we come together, there's a trust that I will be shown a way where I can connect to my internal teacher and connect to the Spirit and be shown how to live in connection with the Spirit. That's all it takes, is the faith for that. But for four or six weeks uh, of, of a mystery school or a, a tabula rasa like event, that's a big investment, it seems, to those that are very much have lives invested in the world. Because that's like, wow, six weeks, that's that's not like a weekend retreat online where you just turn on your computer and you log in to Zoom and, and then you log out and close your computer. This is, seems like a big time frame. But I do feel like that's what's necessary because the conditioning and the programming runs so deep and people are mesmerized and hypnotized by the ego into a very structured, kind of ritualistic, uh, repetitive day, like Groundhog Day mm. with Bill Murray, you know, where it seems like the same day loops over and over. And most people don't like the monotony and the boredom of just repeating the same things over and over, like that Beatles song, Just Another Day, you know. Da, 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 da. You know, it's it's not really happy at all. Mm -hmm. So, when people come and say, I'm really here to show up and to dive in, then they start to come out of their false comfort zones. They come out of their repetitive, familiar lives. And then they trust that the miracle will lead the way. And it, it works. We've had people who, one woman came we didn't know at the beginning, but she had been diagnosed with cancer and she's coming to a six-week devotional stay at, at Mallorca for one of these long retreats. And then by the time she leaves, you know, the cancer is, is gone. It's in remission. But it was just that willingness to come in faith with openness to, okay, I need help here. I don't even know what I need, but I trust that coming together and, and not trying to protect my thoughts and trying to hide my thoughts will will bring me to a happiness and to a, a, a natural state of mind. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe once we said yes to it, the rest is beyond our control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. it's not like we have to struggle every moment. What now? What now? Um, what should I do now? It's not like that. It's yeah. truly a a willingness and a desire to say, okay, I give I give my my life to you, or I, even just if I can't say for the rest of my life, I give these six weeks to you. And if there is anything you want to you want to reveal to me, if anything you want me to heal, please bring it on. You know, we always yeah. say in the six weeks, <laughs> be careful when you say bring it on because. And spirit will bring it on. Yeah, yeah, that's a fond memory of the last one we did in Mallorca, where I think I was we went through so many transformations in in the first four weeks, and then I think I had to go uh, for an event over in Barcelona, so I flew the the flight. But before I left, yeah, I I said, well, if you really want healing, then all you have to do is pray to the Holy Spirit, bring it on, and then all these hands went up very enthusiastically, one by one in the air, bring it on, bring it on, Holy Spirit, bring it on. And then, yeah, when I came back, it, the whole place was really lit up. <laughs> then it was like, wow, that is the prayer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. So it's a little 
knew we're doing it now uh, instead of Mallorca or instead up in, in the monastery in uh, Utah. We're down here right on uh, Lake Chapala. And so in one sense the backdrop has shifted, but it's the same joy of Tebula Rasa. Because sometimes people say, well I do want something deeper, or I want something more focused or more intensive, and I do want to dive in, and yeah, that's really what this Tebula Rasa Mystery School is about. Because there is a focus there, there's such a care. Mm -hmm. From the moment you seem to land and then come up and step foot on the property, mm -hmm. then there's you could feel the swirl starting mm -hmm. to happen immediately because it's an unwinding. It's what I was doing with all those heart-to-heart -heart talks that sometimes would last an hour, two, three, four hours. But, but actually this is has more than just the talk. It, it is diving into the experience and, and then practically uh, letting issues come up or grievances come up or whatever needs to be healed, just making a space for it to come up and then you have all this support around you to do it. And there is a lot of care and support that goes into these, these events. And then we'll see that actually this curriculum is truly alive. Yeah. It's not compartmentalized that we, we come here for a six week of healing, then we go home and everything will stay the same. It's actually going to turn everything around, turn everything around because we, we started to realize, realize that every day is a curriculum um, by the spirit, carefully orchestrated by the spirit. Every every single day is about listening and following, and in that forgiveness is accomplished because we have to empty our minds in what we think is happening, in order to tap into the spirit's way of, you know, no, go there, do this, and then the perception changes in following those instructions. So. I know that's why a lot of people find it very difficult to leave because they, 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 per, they think the future based on the past and they don't want to live in that way anymore, thinking the world is boring and they're the victim of it, they have no power to change um, what's going on. But really, the way I see it is that the mind has shifted so much in that way of living, it's, it's a total opposite way, if anything, then we just couldn't really stand to live in the same way anymore. But the good news is that what I received as the biggest gift is that I realized, wow, life can be lived in that way, in this way. And actually, this is the only way that, that we can have peace. We can have a present peace, which is to just allowing every single symbol and every event and everything to be seen as a curriculum. And then we're just here waiting to be guided. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's, it's, it's such an openness, really. It's, it's like the last characteristic of a teacher of God that Jesus talks about in the Course. It's open-mindedness where, where you don't have the preconceptions and you, you really don't know how the day will unfold. And Jesus is asked that at some point in the Manual for Teachers, how does a teacher of God spend his day? And he says, for the advanced teacher of God, this question is superfluous. It's, it's really not in mind. You're not thinking in terms of hours in the day. You're not counting the hours anymore. You, you, you aren't really looking forward. <laughs> you came over to check, David, you remember the show we're doing today? Oh yeah, yeah. But it's more of an internal thing for me because it's like, you know, I'm pretty clueless <laughs> yeah, about... Because I, I mentioned it to uh, you on Sunday and you said, uh, yeah, yeah, tomorrow. I said, no, it's not tomorrow, it's Thursday. <laughs> Thursday, <laughs> Thursday. Sure Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, it's on my ca calendar, but the thing is, <laughs> even that, nothing is a guarantee anymore, you know. But it's, it's fun because, you know, it was about 22 years ago that I started using this uh, awakening mind um, symbol. Mm. 
And that's about when we started the foundation for the awakening mind. Then maybe about 12 years ago, we started using living miracles. So we used interchangeably those symbols. But when you think of it, awakening mind, we're, we're in the joy of the moment. The tabula rasa, this moment is the awakening mind. You know, it, it's, people say, why don't you just use awake mind or awaken mind? They said, no, it's, this is our experience. It's awakening. It, it, it's happening now. It's it's not a past tense thing. It's a, it's happening right now, and living miracles is have the experience of living the miracle. You know, actually be in the miracle, be experiencing it right now. Mm -hmm. That's always the point. It's not about trying to set something up in the world or or solve something in the world because it's not a worldly problem. It's just it's a perceptual problem that is healed when you're just in the moment and you're looking at the world with fresh eyes, with new eyes. That's, I always like Judy Scotch Whitson would say, realize. You know, she, she would use real eyes for realize. Yeah. <laughs> and I would be, oh yeah, that's cool. That's, that's really what it's all about. So that really keeps it fresh and exciting. And, and, and then, it's, there's never a dull moment, really. That That's a kind of a cliche for the world, but we're like really seeing that's what living miracles is, is, is there, there is never a dull moment. It's it's vibrant, it's alive, it's fresh. Uh, we were talking today, you were talking about Greg and making a movement to the monastery, how vibrant and happy it was and how it's everybody feels it. You know, it's like, it's it's always so obvious. It's not like you can announce something new to somebody, it's like everyone's, yeah, 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 you know, it, you, it's felt, a felt experience, and then that's how we live every day, we live every moment. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and also, you know, even what you're mentioning, Greg moving from Camas to the monastery, it's almost like he already felt it, he saw all the signs, he feel the spark, he feel the calling, and there in the monastery, Kirsten is like, come over, come over, please come over. And Greg is sitting there in camera thinking, do I have the permission to, to do that? Do I have the permission to follow my spark? Yeah. And that's really... <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Do we give ourselves permission to follow our spark, our, our happiness, our joy? Because mm. I was telling that uh, recently I was saying, I was talking about service. Oftentimes people have such a connotation of like almost like a heaviness because they think of, oh, what do I have to do? You know, what do I have to do to serve? And it's like, that's not it. It's the, the happiness itself is the state of mind that is the service to God. If God created you happy, then to be happy would be the greatest service to the Creator not in terms of doing, but in terms of being. And then we're back to that St. Augustine, love and do what you will. It's like love and enjoy the experience, flow with it, uh, watch it r shine and radiate, but but don't put it on the timeline because if, as soon as you do, it's like artists and singers who who love what comes through them in terms of the art or the music. But as soon as the ego turns it into a business, as soon as they have to keep track of the, the debits and the credits and the profession of it, really music is not designed to be a profession. Mm -hmm. And I don't think art is designed. Of course, the, the spirit is practical to use all symbols to make, you know, make ends meet or to, to meet needs while they're believed in. But... It's the joy of the moment, in, in the moment of the art, or the moment of the song, that, that is where the thrill is. Mm. It's not to be found. That was Abraham Maslow, you know, when he studied the, the being needs of the self-actualizing people that he studied back at his time, dead and living. He found that the ones that were so in the moment, that believed that means and ends were the same, that weren't looking to future ends, those were the ones that were alive. Those are the ones that were vibrant and, and happy and self-actualizing, he called it. Mm. And just re realizing who you really are is, is the joy of the moment. So it's been throughout history symbols of it, but we're just saying, yeah, jump in. The water's warm. 
take the water slide, don't hold on, splash in there and, and give yourself the experience of who you are because it's much simpler than the ego would try to make it be, you know, it, it, this does, world doesn't have to be so uh, difficult and complex when we let go of holding on to the ego and its prescriptions and you must do this mm -hmm. and you should do this and you have to do this, when we let that go, like Greg going with his permission for his spark, you know, that's an example of it right there, then it, it all flows very easily, very happily. And it, it actually brings a spark to everybody. Yeah. And that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, that's one thing I, I really see how... Um, it's kind of like um, a fast-paced journey in a way for me just because I get to be in this place where I can watch everybody's life unfolding on top of my own life, of course, but just to live with people 24-7, knowing their um, process and their, uh, their struggles, but then at the same time, just watch the Spirit offers His solution to absolutely every single one, it actually really built this trust and this strength inside because there is absolutely no doubt when I see everybody's life, how taking care of everybody is, down to the minute details and questions. And the Spirit offers such a spark. You know, the, the curriculum is based on attraction and every step the spirit is laying in front of everybody have such a, a, a attractiveness to them and they want to go toward it and they just get hold, held back by these ego beliefs or this self doubt and we're just together to say no we don't need to we don't need to entertain that let's just move toward the spark move toward this this attraction and then see how everything unfolds how everything benefits absolutely everybody Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think it's that what you're describing is is such a faith and trust in the spirit to orchestrate all things. Because when there's a, a personal sense of investment or a personal role that is believed in, then that is is what is getting undone. That's not the the moment itself. That's just this block that's mm -hmm. been covering the moment over. Right. So it's fun because it starts to to reorient the mind away from from playing a role and I did mention that last night uh, during the the talk in the evening the Mexican dynasty talk of, I think it was where uh, Shakespeare said all the world's a stage and everyone must play their part but uh, Jesus kind of tweaked it for me when I asked him about that and he said all the world's a stage and divine mind can play no part because the divinity is the moment it's the the vibrancy of this moment. It's not, it's not inside a role. Mm. Uh, you know, when uh, a husband and wife come together in, a, in in a marriage, you know, the marriage is really the the joy of the moment, the, the, <laughs> the union of the moment. It's not some time construct. You know, where you know the spirit, which doesn't even uh, know of time, linear time. It, the spirit knows that eternity is real. So it's acknowledging the the eternity of everything, the moment of everything, not you know you know the ten year anniversary or twenty five or fifty years, and everything's a backdrop. I mean, yesterday I went to a birthday party for Susan. It was a very happy, joyful birthday party, and there was lots of joy and laughter and mm. and love. But it wasn't like based on. Uh, really celebrating a, a date of birth. It was more of just a backdrop for celebrating life itself, e eternal life. It's what I feel. So that way you don't try to make special days or special mm -hmm. events or, or anything uh, because it's it's the moment and the moment is is always here with us. It's always vibrant. So it's it's, it's a different Mindset. It's it's a tabula rasa mindset yeah. that we're talking about. Yeah. yeah, it's almost like this morning when I saw that rainbow. I feel I was just saying to myself. I said, I am in love. I'm so in love. <laughs> there is no no reason and there is no body, but it's it's this feeling of every moment is so new and it's it's um, 
yeah, it's a direct com communication, a communion with with the source of love. Mm. And that's what we tap yeah. into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. It's really, it's really. Uh, it feels very natural. That's all I can say. It just feels like this is this is what life is, and, and it's not uh, the the struggles and the challenges and the trying to figure things out. You know that. I mean, there there was a time I was sitting next to uh, Joni and. Um, and very close to Sabine at the end of the table yesterday at, during the birthday party and Sabine was laughing about how well I can't always share what's in my heart with my, my biological family, you know, my brother and this and that because they say, oh, oh, oh okay, what's, what's your backup plan, what's your plan B? Mm -hmm. And then uh, after we were talking a little bit, um, Marina was saying, oh, there's a, you could put German subtitles on a, a video of David on Plan B's, and so she <laughs> she started searching for it on her phone, and she oh here it is I'll send you the link you can put it in. Well, Sabine left because she sat right next to Marina. She got it and she went in there and she looked and it already had, she go, oh, it already has German subtitles. <laughs> and I said, yeah, that's a good topic for undoing the, kind of the linear logical mind. Somebody had already done it. I said, that's <laughs> fast. You didn't, you didn't even have to do anything. It's already done. Mm -hmm. But we were just rejoicing in, in the undoing that, that we don't have to figure the world out. We don't have to plan. We actually, if there's plans to be made, Jesus tells us in Lesson 135, you will be told of them. Well, it can't be any simpler than that. If you're just in listen and follow mode, and if there's even plans to be made, practically speaking, those will be given too. So, you know, it's a great life. <laughs> it <laughs> is. And nothing is more exciting than realizing uh, with total certainty that we truly can live this way. Everything will come to us and to tell us, like four years ago, um, you know, we felt, okay, let's just move the community down to Mexico. That was a huge decision. We got so many people at the time, 40 some people, yeah, yeah. move everybody down to Mexico and, and you had absolutely no doubt of what, of, what about this, what about this, what about the practicality? It's just like, yes, that's the guidance, let's move. And it was so vibrant, then we all came down. And then, um, now, after a year and a half of pandemic, all of a sudden, the Mexico government is offering residency for anybody who is trapped here. And it was just like, out of the blue, we heard about it. Then the whole community got residency in Mexico, and we didn't even plan to do that. So, but that's, that, that is how our life is not our own, because we give it to be used. And then we, in, in that way, the logistics, the residencies, the locations, the legality, they were taken care of by the Spirit. And then when, when those guidance came in, we started to realize oh, okay, I guess we're supposed to live here now, long-term. Mm -hmm. But that was like, uh, after that, then we started to understand. It was like so confused. Yeah, yeah that's it. It's, it reminds me of what Jesus said in the Bible 2,000 years ago. It was, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all else will be added. And he was meaning that literally, that that his direction is, is inward, it's very much into the intuition and, and inner guidance, and that all else will be handled. Mm -hmm. And he does say that in the Course, that if you'll allow me to perform miracles through you, I will handle everything else that doesn't matter. I will arrange time and space. Well, that's something that none of us have had any uh, experience with uh, in the past. But now, it, it, in retrospect, it's easy to say, oh yeah, we couldn't see it, you know, there was some trepidation and, and uh, doubt, when, you know, moving the whole community 
to Mexico. I remember Eric's like, how am I going to get down there? I said, well, you could take a, a bus trip down along the coast. and from California. Yeah, from California, all the way from Northern California. And he did. And then there we were in the parking lot of La Casa, a whole bunch of us just re rejoicing and <laughs> laughing and hugging each other. And, and yet that shows that the spirit takes care. Mm -hmm. that, that is the big concern, I think, that people mm -hmm. feel where they feel all their past learning is how they will take care of themselves. Right. And they believe that until things start to break down and fall apart. And, you know, nobody really saw the pandemic coming. Nobody saw the economic upheavals. Nobody saw the, the, the world as we knew it uh, shifting so much. Now, <laughs> it's like I, I was doing something the other day. I, I was having a call with three uh, Portuguese-speaking friends that are coming for the Portuguese ministry, and I was saying, one was translating for me, and I was saying, yeah, it's it's not the same world uh, as it was, and she stopped her translation. She said, what do you mean? What are you talking about? I said, well, it's, it's I'm talking about the world today is not like the pre-pandemic world, because people are coming from other countries, and there's many things to consider, uh, because it's people can't move about as freely, freely uh, internationally or even locally. Uh, and so she's, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. And I, I said, that's why we have to be so fresh in the moment. We have to just pour everything out, pour our hearts out, and, and let it be shown to us, because we're not in charge personally of this plan. We're just beholding it, you know, in front of us uh, happening, but we're, we're not personally in charge. We're not personally responsible, which is another huge thing that people have to be willing to let go of, because the, if you don't really have an experience of trusting the Spirit and having things work out and being cared for, then you do need to allow mm. yourself to have that experience, yes. which changes everything. Then, then you're no longer just feeling like a human being trying to deal with an external world. You, you start to see the world of miracles is just coming from your mind, yes. not to you at all as a person. Yeah, yeah, and I, I feel that is the, something that is worthy to pray, to have more of those experiences and, and to be convinced, to build up trust. And that's I feel, is what our Tabula Rasa Mystery School is about, because we're not going in there to have any plan or any program, but it's not to push anything away either. But we're together in the present to be very, very aware of what the Spirit's present guidance would be and follow that and then behold miracles in that moment. Yeah. That would be the yeah. curriculum. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's that's it. That's the curriculum right there. Beholding miracles in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> and then we see that truly, life takes care. Spirit mm -hmm. takes care. Yeah. You know, and yeah. this is being taken care yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. Then you can relax. Yeah. Because the the anxiety was always like this feeling like I personally haven't done enough or mm -hmm. how will I be taken care of? Uh, I was doing some a couple sessions at La Casa and it was beautiful how you know Sabine shared how she's she had been ill and and it's been so intense and she's been crying uh, for some days and. Uh, so we finally started to get at, well, what, what is it? And she, I'm just afraid. And then, it, afraid around what? Afraid around money. Uh, and then I laughed and I said, well, I'll, I'll take you, I'll buy you lunch then if you don't have any money. She said, no, I, it's not that I don't have money, it's the future. Right. So it's the future money. Yeah. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, it's the future money. But, you know, we can playfully kind of get at what are the thoughts, you know, and it's this future needs, future money, what will happen to me if I follow the Spirit. And I, she started even doubting all the steps she'd taken, and maybe I've been wrong about everything, maybe I'm lost, and so on and so forth. And I said, no, no, you, you took all those steps in faith for Jesus, and Jesus has got you. And, and, and I said, believe me, money is not the problem, not the question. 
And I talked about that recently, I think on Tuesday on the Spanish show, because some a woman had this big grievance with her sister. I think her name was Beatrice, had grievance with her sister, had not paid back this money that she was owed, and she kept dreading uh, even meeting her sister. And I said, just go in peace, go with the purpose of peace, and don't even focus on the thoughts of the money. And even during the meeting, she uh, kept hearing the ego in the back of her mind saying, when is she going to bring up the money? And you know, the ego had a, always has an agenda around something in form. But it was so beautiful because we had a whole talk then on how money is just a, a symbol to be used by the Holy Spirit. Just like the body. Why would, would we put so much effort as if the body is something in and of itself instead of just a, a symbol? Mm -hmm. Where money is in and of itself, it means something. I, I was quoting that passage, I think it's from the psychotherapy pamphlet where Jesus says, money is not evil, it is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and and that puts everything in a context, like, wow, yeah, that's right, I should be focusing on miracles, I should be focusing on my guidance, I should be focusing on this moment, not on these seeming extraneous thoughts, which are just ego thoughts about need and lack and grievances based on, oh, I didn't get repaid what you promised, and broken promises, and on and on. The mind can go drop down into darkness and heaviness as soon as it falls into those thoughts, but then, no, no, this is the focus. So she had a wonderful encounter with her sister, oh. Beatrice did, and then there was all this joy of this uh, necklace that she had bought uh, over in the Canary Islands. Uh, two part, one part she kept and one part her sister had, and they both, the sister had cried re in remembrance of how precious that gift was. So the focus went to the gratitude not mm. towards the grievance. And actually the money never came up in the talk, in the in the meeting mm. at all. And I, I find that that's, that's what happens when people really give it over to Spirit in a genuine way. Here Holy Spirit, you solve this, mm. you take care of this. Oftentimes things then come back mm. where somebody just says, oh, you know, I, I now have the money to pay you or I now choose to send it to you or whatever, but it's not on some kind of an agenda or mm -hmm. some kind of a, a, a tight kind of you owe me thing. It's, that, that motive just disappears. Mm. We don't need to play the you owe me game. Uh, that's no fun. When two people meet, you owe me. You owe me? Well, you know, what kind of attitude is that? Jesus never went around <laughs> saying to anybody. He didn't even <laughs> say it to the Pharisees and scribes. You owe me, <laughs> you know. No, he, he didn't say it to anyone because he was in generosity. He was giving the love of the Heavenly Father, the Creator. He was giving it in the moment and he wasn't looking for anything in return. And what a way shower. That's showing us how to live. Practically, every day, every moment. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. I remember I had I read this quote: "A man can only receive that which comes from heaven." And when when I read that, I really took that to heart, and I thought, you know, true. Anything that is of value that I can receive can only be come from God can only become from the Spirit. So then let me put my focus on asking the Spirit for the experience that I want. You know, before before um, truly dive into the Course, I, I read it, I loved it. But from that perspective, when I was projecting into the future of the peace of mind that Jesus described in the Course, I thought that sounded so boring. Um, that from the ego yeah. perspective, that was just nothing happening. <laughs> That's the way that I, I project onto what a peace of mind would <laughs> feel like. <laughs> but <laughs> the present moment is not is not that at all. You know, it's filled with miracles, filled with love, filled with this this aliveness inside. 
and it's just uh, anything that we look into the future or look back into the past. We we look through the the ego lens. It always looks really really dull and boring and and bad and lacking in some way. The picture is lacking.、Mm -hmm. There's something lacking in this. So, yes, that's that's what the solution was. Was if there is anything I would like, I would I would ask the spirit to offer it through the miracles. You know, even、mm -hmm. the spe specifics gradually faded away, but it was the miracles and that aliveness that became the only thing that you would want to ask. Yeah. Yeah, it it has been. We've needed instruction in in this reversing our thought system and and releasing the grievances. But I always liked when Jesus said, "When you want only love, you will see nothing else." And I was like, "Huh, that's amazing." And then I remember going into some workbook lessons, you know, which is God is in everything I see. Uh, lesson twenty nine, and then lesson thirty. God is in everything I see because God is in my mind. Oh yeah, that's it. That's the same thing. And he kept saying, "It's it's not that God indwells in objects as you perceive them,、mm -hmm. but it's that God is in your mind. The Holy Spirit is with you right now. And and then when you align with that presence of the Holy Spirit, then everything you perceive is lit up with that presence, that purpose." Oh, okay. And then one more little loop around. If you perceive anything lacking in any situation, it's what you have failed to give. Oh, yeah, that's it. It's again. Don't go looking to the world to provide the gifts because there aren't gifts there. It's just in the giving, in the presence, in the sharing of the light, sharing of the Holy Spirit that you perceive it in everyone and everything. So it's. It's quite a a thought reversal, but it's like it just takes a willingness to give ourselves over to it and say, "Okay, yeah, sh teach me, show me, lead me, guide me." If you have that attitude, then then it comes、mm -hmm. into awareness. You know, it, it surely your mind lights up. But if you if you still want to hold on to the old way of What's in it for me, or、mm -hmm. what did they do for me, or what did I get from them, or what did I get from this situation? That get get get、mm -hmm. um, motive is is the ego.、Mm -hmm. There's there's no happiness in that, and yet you know we've been kind of、uh, consumers of the world, not seeing that the world was was a reflection of our mind, and that we're not really created to be consumers. We're created to be givers. Like God is a giver, and God creates givers.、Uh, God doesn't create consumers.、Mm -hmm. You know, that's all the world. Consumers say, you know, this is what they want, and you know, it's just exciting times now because we're actually seeing the reflections of what we believe in. And and for me, it's like it's a happy、uh, it's a happy painting. Rainbows, big rainbows are showing up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, truly. I mean, everything becomes a reflection. Even yesterday, last night, I, I listened to.、Um, I, I came across this YouTube video. It's a Buddhist monk、um, who talked about the, the effect on people, the pandemic for,、uh, effect on people. He interviewed a lot of people on the streets, and and he he summarized all the impact, which I think he lists out ten, but the 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 main ones is. They want to focus on relationship connections.、Mm -hmm. They want to slow down. They want to、um, work less, <laughs> <laughs> and they want to pray more.、Uh -huh. That those are the reflections from the you know from the whole world.、Mm -hmm. What a beautiful、yeah. reflection! Oh, that is sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Buddhist monks doing interviews and research. <laughs> that's that's exciting. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Wow. We're hitting the hour mark right now. So, yeah. For anybody, if you're interested to joining us,、um, you can check our website on nondualityonline.com. 
I think all the information about our upcoming mystery schools uh, will be there. Yeah, and ACIM.mobi is even a shorter name to remember, uh, which is in progress now, getting updated yeah. as we speak. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you so much, David, for just uh, joining this moment. Yeah, yeah, what fun. You know, whatever name we put to it, we, we really are honored and appreciative of it. So, it's, yeah. it's an honor. And thank you so much, everyone, for listening and we send you a lot of love from Mexico. Bye.